Hello and welcome to episode 10 of Lockdown Euro. So we have the playoff final between Scotland and Serbia. You see the team here, it's largely stayed the same. The only difference being that Kolov does have to play it right back off Kemp. But it should be a nice little matchup to be fair. There's many capable players in there. McNulty's been on a scoring run which took them through Israel and they now look to go through Serbia. Obviously you've got players like Mitrovic, Tadic and Linkvic Stavic standing in their way. So first highlight of the match up here, this guy's got an all special card Serie A team. Not a bad strike from Mitrovic, the keeper was always behind it. Move on to the corner, taken by McNulty, we haven't really changed the corner take, he just happened to be on it. And on the end of it is Mitrovic, so almost scoring to scoring. Corners are rarely scored in this game, so it actually feels like a bit of achievement at this point when you do manage to do it. Yeah, it does put Serbia into a half point early lead. So our opponent comes down the right here with Lozano. He does manage to stick one towards back post. Lucky for us, he does miss timing. It comes back off the post and into the keeper's hand. But he builds from a, I believe, offside decision there. From his own box, comes through the middle now with nine Golan. Into Fita Correa. Further forward to Gomez. I've got Nastatic tracking him. He does manage to cut back, cut again, cut back again. I think I've got the tackle in, but not enough. And he does finish into the far corner to make it 1 all. And we decide to build through the middle here. McTominay into the feet of McNulty. Plays it further forward to his strike partner, Mitrovic. He bears in on box, does manage to get in, rattles off the post, but McNulty's there, as he always seems to be, poaching rebounded efforts in. Now, it did for some reason give McTominay the assist to that. I'm completely confused, but as I said, like it may stitch some teams up with some interesting decisions like that, but if I stick with it the entire time, at least it's consistent, I suppose. And it would lead to a lot of confusion trying to track and make my own assist in comparison to theirs, so I just run with what they tell me. Come close twice there with a collar of free kick, and then I think that was Tadic into the box. The keeper does stay behind the effort, and that takes us through to half time. A very brief look at the stats. They were somewhat even, but... Again, I felt like I should have been leading and deservedly was. To get the ball towards Mitrovic here, who does enter the box. And a nice lashed effort across goal. Set up by Milinkovic, I believe. So, does put Serbia back into the lead by half a point. We win it back here, and McGinn brings it forward. Does briefly get tackled. But does decide to exchange the ball with Robertson. Heads further down the left. Doesn't do enough to stop me there. And I can see the ball across McGinn finds McNulty and a nice little tap finish to give the lead back to Scotland. Our opponent comes down right here again with Lozano, very fast player and once he's on the wrong side of my defenders it's looking like an issue. Does put it to the edge where I think I've got the interception in, haven't and he lashes it past. I forget what the goalie's called, put the Serbian one, bold geezer. From kickoff, we decide to try and look to build. We now head down the right. Tadic back into Milinkovic, into the feet of McNulty. Ubier yeah, makes a poor attempt at tackling us, and again, as he's always been doing, McNulty with another cracking finish. And puts Scotland into a one and a half point lead, and it's past the halfway mark at this point. So, Scotland really are asserting themselves in this matchup. They do not want to miss out on the Euros, and just as a thing, if they do manage to make it there, they will be playing England as they gain another point here from the McNulty man of the match. So I'm sure they want a crunch clash against the English. And at five and a half to three, it's looking like it could be theirs. We head into the second game here. Kind of a rather simple team that you might have been doing, judging by the two icons and non La Liga players. Something to do with a um, objective at that point, just to win with nine. First time La Liga players. And he almost takes the lead there with Hector Herrera, does rattle the post. And we move it from McTominay into the feet of Milinkovic. Does get his shot away and it is blocked, but the rogue sly challenge does catch him. And they do give us a free kick, which Kolarov takes. And that is an absolute rattler. He is known to smack him with his left and score a free kick from time to time. And he's done so for us here. Just hits the crossbar and just about goes over the line. And I think where this guy's doing objectives and goes one nil down, he doesn't want to try and see the game out and beat us. So he does decide to leave at that point. It's a very quick win that's benefited Serbia more than anything as they nick a goal and the highest match rate of player. After getting back into it and now only half point down at five and a half to five. Heading into the third game. Another player doing objectives. 
it wasn't a great time to be playing to be fair as these new objectives come out this guy's trying to do the Toram I believe with Mateta up front and Kwaeson trying to get assists out on the wing so you've kind of got probably people who don't play too much Div Rivals coming on to sweat and get the card through objectives so it was always going to be a tough one he does kind of cheese his way through there a little bit and James does finish past our keeper and now James down the right does manage to stick it on the head of Mateta and that does put him 2-0 up very quickly he comes to again here but this time it's saved and gathered by the keeper as we throw it out and it enters half time so not a great half for us it's not done us any favours currently besides whoever would be the highest rate player at the end it doesn't look like we're going to be gaining too many points so it could end up going into a fourth game here Talic's had a slow day at the office. I'd probably argue the whole team's had a slow day at the office so far. As you can see, we have literally not had a shot. Had a bit of the ball, but just have not been able to create anything. So I'm looking just to get some kind of goal to push it further to a close. We head down the left with McGinn. Into the feet of McNulty. You know, exchange with Robertson. Scottish linking up well. So we go back into Matomane. And a lovely finish again from McNulty. Bring Scotland within a point of the victory. But that goal again was completely made in Scotland. Robertson, McTominay, McGinn, McNulty all getting involved. There's only McKenna left out, as you can't be too surprised by centre back. Left that in as he did get a red card there, but it doesn't do too much for us as he does manage to worm through a shot with Cordova, who smashes it past. I think it's Dimitrovic remembering now the goalie. And it is all of the game. So Scotland could win it here. If they have the highest match rate, and then you think as they have got the only goal of the game, it probably will go that way. As we see here, it does go to McNulty. Oh, sorry, not McNulty, McTominay. So that is the win for Scotland. They do manage to get past Serbia. Again, a tough opponent. Israel wasn't the easiest either, but they would say Scotland would have the better of Israel. But they have beat Serbia, which is an impressive victory. And McNulty again with four goals. It's been a real killer for Scotland and he was only really just meant to be their forward as a kind of best choice but he's only 60, 76 rated in form but the former Pompey lad's been banging it. See Scotland join Iceland and Slovakia through. Next matchup is Georgia versus Macedonia. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.